In this video, you will learn four different tricks that you can use to speed up your exports in Premiere Pro. When Premiere is going to export some edited video, it has to do two separate tasks, rendering and encoding. It's important that you understand what that means so that you can understand why our tricks can save you time. When Premiere exports a video, it starts by reading the source file that you have imported into your project. And that file is nearly always a compressed file. So it decompresses the file so that it can deal with the actual image. Next, it applies any transformations that you've done in your sequence, color correction, resizing, any manipulations to the image. That process is called rendering. Then it encodes the images into whatever codec you chose in your export settings. And it saves that compressed encoded data into an output file. So we start with a compressed file from our source and we end up with a compressed file in our output. Now it's usually not possible to skip either one of those steps. You usually have to render and then encode when you're exporting. But our first trick allows you to avoid rendering and encoding multiple times. In most situations, you don't just render out your timeline once. You often render out a rough cut and then you get feedback from your producer or your client and then you need to export again after you've made some tweaks. And then the process repeats itself. So you usually end up exporting the same timeline several times. If we're careful about our rendering and exporting though, we can save a lot of time. Here is a timeline with a short film on it, and we're going to focus in on just one clip for now. You can see that it has some color corrections on it. If I tell Premiere to export, it's going to render that file with my color correction, and then it's going to compress that data into our output codec. We're going to export into ProRes 422 in this case and it takes about 60 seconds. But I can also tell Premiere to just render the clip and save that rendered file on the hard drive. That file is called a preview file, and I can use that file for exporting later without rendering all over again. I go to sequence and then render in to out. Now Premiere renders the clip that's between my in and out markers and saves it away in the bar turn screen. This means that Premiere does not need to render that section of my timeline. Now, if I go to export this portion of my timeline again, and I check the box that says use previews, now Premiere will simply take the file that it saved when I rendered and compress that to my output codec. It does not need to do any of the color calculations or anything else. It just needs to read that file and encode it. We usually call that a transcode, and that only takes a couple of seconds. Now, let's say that I want to change the title at the end of my film because there was a typo the first time. Premiere will still need to render the title, but it doesn't have to render the main clip again, which means that my second export will be almost as fast as the first one. If I'm only making fairly small changes to my edit, all of my exports from now on will be fairly quick. All of this sounds wonderful, but there is a catch. By default, Premiere uses a fairly low quality codec for previews. That means that if I check the box to use previews when I export, my final result will not have the full quality that I'm expecting. That is fine if I am just going to export a low resolution preview and it's not the final version, but what if I want to export the full quality clip multiple times? In that case, I need to change my preview codec to a high quality codec, which is very easy. I go to sequence, then sequence settings, then preview file format. If you want to be absolutely sure that you aren't losing any quality, then you can choose a lossless or uncompressed format. But bear in mind that if you use a very high quality or high bitrate codec for your previews, that may take up a lot of space on your hard drive. So most people will pick something on the high end, but not the very top. If you're not sure which codec to use, you can take a look at this page on the Frame.io blog, which allows you to compare many different codecs. There's one more feature of the Use Previews checkbox that can make a huge difference in render times, and it's strangely seldom mentioned. If you choose exactly the same codec settings for your preview files and for your output file, you can skip both the rendering and the encoding when you export. Because Premiere has already rendered the previews and encoded them, all it has to do is copy the data into the output file. Premiere calls this smart rendering, and in this case, we are actually combining the use previews feature and the smart rendering feature. So I will go back to my sequence settings and change the preview file codec to ProRes 422HQ. 
I now need to render the timeline again because I've changed my preview format. And now when I export, I choose Match Sequence Settings, which will ensure that my preview settings and my export settings match. I will make sure that Use Previews is checked and then click Export. That took less than a second. Combining the Use Previews with a Smart Render feature makes multiple exports go extremely quickly. And it has the extra advantage that the image is not compressed twice. If you use previews without the smart render, then your image will be compressed twice. And there is a, some theoretical loss of image quality when you do that. This trick doesn't work for all codecs, unfortunately. You have to use one of the codecs listed on this page here. The tricky part here is knowing whether or not Premiere is using your preview files exactly as they are and just copying them into the export file, or whether Premiere is reading those preview files, decoding them, and then re-encoding them into the output file. It's important for you to know because if it's re-encoding those files, then you could be losing some quality because the images are being compressed twice, and it will also take longer. Fortunately, it's not actually that hard to do. Select a clip, pre-render it, and then export with the Use Previews box checked, and write down how long it takes. Then export again, but make a small tweak to your output codec. You should use the same codec, but make a small change. You should see the slightly tweaked export taking longer, because now it's having to transcode your preview files, whereas the first time it just copied the data. If it takes about the same amount of time to do both exports, that probably means that Premiere is not using the Smart Render feature. The third trick can make a huge difference in export speeds, but it will only work for people who are doing only the editing in Premiere, not the color correction. Let's imagine that I am the editor for a film, and the camera department has given me proxy files to edit with. They took the raw files from the camera and converted them into a DNxHD format with a standard Rec. 709 look, so it's not in a very low contrasty log format. I am just doing the edit, so I'm not bothering with any color correction or special effects in Premiere. So I import all the footage into Premiere, I do all of my editing, and then it comes time to export. If I export in exactly the same format as my source footage, which in this case is DNx HD, then Premiere doesn't have to render at all. I haven't added any color correction or effects to my clips, so it can copy my images straight from the original files, which are DNx HD, and paste them directly into my export file, which is also DNx HD. It does not need to render them or even compress them because they already are compressed. It just has to copy them. This is another way to take advantage of Premiere's smart rendering feature, but this time we're only using the smart rendering, not the use previews feature. So I'll click export, and it takes about 10 seconds to export an entire five minute film. I'm doing this on a MacBook Pro laptop, so not a high-end workstation. Again, since we're using the Smart Render feature, we can only use one of the codecs listed on this page. H.264 files, for instance, will not work with this workflow, but ProRes and DNxHD and Cineform all work just fine. Trick number four is another way to take advantage of Smart Rendering, but it's a lot more flexible than the first three tricks. There are no restrictions about your footage, you don't need to pre-render the timeline before you export, and it works even if you're doing lots of effects in color correction. Here is that five minute short film, but this time it has color correction on every clip, so I can't use the plain smart render to export it. I have to render in order to process my color corrections. The first time that I export this timeline, I have to wait for the normal render and export process, and it takes about 10 minutes. But now let's say that I need to make a tweak to my title at the end and re-export. I can import my first exported video and then take advantage of smart rendering to speed up my second export. I take my first export, and import it back into my project, and then I lay it on top of my project in a new layer. Then I will take the slice tool and cut away whatever portion of the timeline that I have changed for my second export. It can be at the end or the middle or the beginning or anywhere I like. As long as I use the same settings for both exports, Premiere will be able to copy the compressed data straight from my first exported file into my second exported file. All that it has to render is the tiny piece that I've changed and it takes about 10 seconds, which is barely slower than in trick number three. The great thing about this method is that I didn't have to prepare anything first. I didn't have to remember to pre-render my sequence. 
you can take advantage of this trick after the fact. Again, this works with ProRes, DNxHD, Cineform, all of the codecs listed on this page. I hope that you found this video useful and that you are able to use at least one of these four tricks to speed up your exports in Premiere Pro. For more actionable tips and resources for post-production professionals, check out blog.frame.io.